Dear non-black peoples of the world, your races persecuted me and there was no balance. There was no balance between those of them who persecuted me and those of them who helped me. It was extremely dramatic how much they persecuted me. In a time where millions of Americans are aware of a Masonic conspiracy and believe it to be so, they didn't have the heart to stand with me or to help me. Being the top martial artist because of my mind, my very powerful, insightful mind, Top one percentile in the SSATs, Algebra 2, and I think it was kindergarten or pre-kindergarten. It was a long time ago, you know, when I was real young. And so on. Very powerful spiritual and mental conditioning. Very profoundly great insight. Careful perception. Impeccable insight. I could have helped your races develop a martial art that would allow them to compete with taller people better than any martial art that you've seen already. In fact, I developed my own martial art to dominate all martial artists and I was bragging the whole time, calling them out in a very offensive manner at times. And these are, these are the most racist people on the planet. And I was calling them out in a way that if they could have beaten me, they would have beaten me just to see me lose. Much less for the $3,000 they would get. They couldn't. I promise you all. I could have helped your races be better. And I could have helped them develop martial arts specific to their body types. That would allow them to be greater warriors. And make their ancestors proud. But instead, your secret societies, your political groups, your social groups, your gangs, all betrayed me in the most despicable manner. And so you will all live eternally humiliated. And I know, it is sad. I assure you this is not what I wanted but it is fair and just. They betrayed me. Women betrayed me. And it should be noted, do we forget people who betray great men? Those of us who do the research, we know how Marcus Garvey's female secretary betrayed him and sided with the government and as a result, the black movement suffered, but the government humiliated itself. It lived in infamy and depravity. The bad things that we do add up, and they understand this. That's why they call it the scales of justice. All this horrible stuff they have done to black people and their pathetic attempts to pretend to make up for it have eternally cursed them and their races. I came offering redemption, but they were not contrite. I came op offering a chance to be absolved, but they were not receptive. I said, I understand martial arts and God better than you people do, or you wouldn't do what you're doing. They didn't listen. They wanted to say things like, oh, you're not as smart as you think you are, on oh, nonsense like this. While every single day, they prove that I am much more intelligent than I ever thought that I was. And they are much more inferior than I ever thought that they were.
I ask them to stop doing what they're doing. Stop disgracing themselves. Trying to take the places of the most worthy and righteous in society. They refused. I said, give me my rightful place and I will make the world a better place. They refused. For weeks I waited for them to test the drinks that were drugged so I could prove not only that I am being fumed and covertly drugged that way, not only that they have shamelessly set me up time and time again to go to the psych ward to be drugged. Proven that beyond any doubt with the interviews of the perps who swore to God that that was the case and that they were telling the truth and if in the future they ever changed their story that they would be lying when they changed their story and not in my interviews. I proved it beyond any doubt yet these people were so full of themselves that not a single person from a single race would help me. I was forced to the conclusion that there aren't many people of any race with any honor left. But if there are, they're almost all black in a nation that is only 12 or 13 percent black. And there's a reason for this. It's not just nature or genetics. There's also social and environmental factors to consider. Black people have the most reason to tell the truth because they take the brunt of the New World Order. They have been done the most wrong by the government. When you look at it, every year more blacks are killed in the world than all of the Native Americans that died when the whites came to America. Every single year, there is a hundred million preventable deaths and they are disproportionately black. There are, rather. Not that I care about grammar. And then these racist people convince other people to care about grammar. They call themselves grammar, you know, freaks and you know grammar buffs and really they're grammar nazis because they know that black people tend to speak ebonics and use hood slangs and these racists demand conformity to their murderous eugenic mainstream culture i lived in a very white and hispanic town shunned every moment of every day by all the women who are beneath me, which is all of them. They have proven to me every moment of every day that they are beneath me by their actions. And the more they get upset about it, the more beneath me they are. The more they're in denial about it, the more beneath me they are. Reminds me of a part in the Bible, at least in the movie, rather. The greatest story ever told, where John the Baptist says something along the lines of, well, it is in the Bible, actually, now I remember. He says something along the lines of, this is a person whose sandals, straps on his sandals, I am not worthy to tie. Because, yes, some people are more holy than others, and they are more worthy and deserving than others. That's why some people go to heaven, and some people don't. And I am a transcendent hero, historically, in pretty much every culture. This is a universal concept. And I was shunned by these pale chicken heads, these big-nosed rats, by these border hopping tramps. Put yourselves in my shoes. 
to see your own race adopting an inferior culture and inferior ideologies like atheism, feminism, Satanism, LGBT philosophies, and what have you. And as a result, they are disrespecting the memory of your ancestors, offending God, and making complete fools out of themselves while you uphold the highest standard of honor, living a humble life. How could I not resent them? Did Jesus not call out the Jews as a brood of vipers, the children of the devil, and so on? If it is good enough for him, why wouldn't it be good enough for me? And so, the reason why you must live in eternal humiliation that will be remembered in the afterlife for eternity is because of your forefathers and foremothers, those of my generation. I tried to reason with them for years, at this point alone, for almost seven years. In August, it will be seven years. I talked to them individually, as a group. I made some videos that reached 100,000 views. They were just so shallow and out of touch, so petty. This is the scum that the tree produced. You know a tree by its fruit, so I know their ancestors by them. Their ancestors must have been the same kinds of cowards that these people are. And therefore their fruit, their fruit as well, their descendants must also be cowards. And thus began your humiliation. I offered them a chance to repent. Through God, all things are possible. A tree that bears bad fruit can bear righteous fruit. They didn't want to hear it. They were too busy indulging in this petty life, this, these Babylonian atrocities, these detestable, unclean acts and practices of inferior forms of life. I had to insult them. I had to chastise them. I had to make them pay the ultimate price in the hope that one day you people will turn to God to end your humiliation and to repent for your treachery. All of your races owe my race for my betrayal, for betraying me, that is. And as so, I would make some suggestions Give all your blood money away to black people. They are ill-gotten gains. For what does it profit a man to gain blood money at the price of a transcendent hero and their own honor and to lose their soul? Give it all away. Your ancestors have created opportunities for you by selling their souls to the devil. If you do not stop reaping the rewards of their treachery, you will not be able to find repentance. You will burn in hell over and over, forever, humiliated while burning. Think about it. So many of you probably understood to a certain extent many of the things that I'm going to tell you in this video. But you probably haven't analyzed them as thoroughly and effectively as I have. I made a video on Saturday 
actually the same day I'm making this video, that I am conflicted about whether I should release. It's unlisted for now. You see, Jesus called out Judas, even though he was his fellow man, he was his follower, and so on. He said, go do what you must right now. And Peter later understood very well what happened. As he wanted to strike him down, along with all the people who came for Jesus. in the yard. There are secret societies that oppress black people and they include a lot of different people from different races. Now, I would be very surprised if even half of these different ethnicities in secret societies were racist against black people. But on the other hand, they are worried about the image of their people. Let's face it. When you look at ancient history before the advent of technology, black people make every other race look bad. And I put this in a way that it's going to really tick off many people. As part of their punishment, and I will almost certainly release the video eventually. And then there's women from all their races, from basically from every race, that have been shunning me. And in San Jose, I think it's about 1% African American. There's hardly any black women, much less attractive black women, in the San Jose area. So that is very important to understand here, is that I have been shunned by the same races, the women from the same races that are involved in this secret society you know, push to suppress my talent. It's very sad indeed. But one thing that is very hard for many people to understand, though it shouldn't be, is the main reason they are doing this is for my political views. It's not because of my race, per se. For had I made them look good, if I was completely controlled, they would have allowed me a certain amount of media exposure and success and would have had me throw fights and make them look good. Because that's what it all goes, goes back to. But to fight for honor in the traditional manner of the martial ways of martial arts, is not to do it the Babylonian way, but to take your rightful place in society. However, there was a degree of people who chose to advance themselves socially and economically by throwing fights. This, this has always been a part of the culture, you know, but it was a very, you know, when it came to the greatest martial artist, that wasn't an issue. When it came to pretty good martial arts, martial artists who were trying to do someone in their community a favor or made a deal with them to marry their daughter or, you know, to, you know, get a certain place in you know, society or whatever, you know, there were those kind of deals being made. But you have to realize that that is not truly honorable. That is full of deception. 
though on the one hand it is understandable. I personally would never take that route. There is too much at stake. Nobody else is doing what they should be. And I can't trust anybody to do what I would do if given my rightful place in society. And even if all these things weren't a problem, why should I? What can I possibly gain from not taking my rightful place in society? Let's face it, presidents aren't as celebrated in our society as martial artists who are acknowledged as great. Do you think when Bruce Lee was alive, the presidents of his lifetime, you know, were more celebrated than he was in his prime? Of course not. Do you think more people like Obama than Jackie Chan? Of course not. I mean, it is laughable to think that that could be the case. Even if you look at the approval rating. Does the approval rating mean that there's, there's a small percentage of people who approve, you know, all but like him more than Jackie Chan? No. So when you look at our society, even today in our society, martial artists are some of the most celebrated people in all of America. So what does a man gain from not taking his rightful place as the top martial artist. What, what, did, what could he possibly gain? I mean, we would be hard pressed to think of someone in our society that is more respected than Jackie Chan. Very hard pressed. I mean, who would it be? You know, maybe a basketball player? Eh, eh, it's kind of up there, you know. It. Maybe LeBron and, you know, I don't really watch basketball anymore, but, you know, it's kind of, it's up there. And really, when we truly consider the two and we break them down and ask ourselves, who should we respect more? The tiebreaker would go to the martial artists because there are spiritual and traditional aspects to his achievement that just aren't there with basketball. We will be very hard pressed to think of one single person more celebrated than the most famous or most appreciated martial artist in America. Now imagine if that martial artist was politically active as uncontrolled opposition. And I think you people are just beginning to understand what I've understood for many years now. I had the foresight in the early 90s to see the importance of me dedicating my life to being the greatest. And now that I've reached a point where I know beyond any doubt that I am the best, years after I've reached my prime, You know, no longer, at, I'm not at the height of my greatness, but still I am greater, even covertly drugged. I mean, for people to truly hear my story, they would fall in love with my passion and my struggle. Tupac would be, you know, would pale in comparison to the kind of respect that I would get. Is he really more passionate than I am? No. Is he smarter than I am? No. Is he more res was he more respectable than I am? No. Was there the traditional spiritual aspects to his existence? No. I mean, my poems are more profound than Tupac's songs. And that's not even why I would be celebrated. Is he more entertaining than I am? Probably, yeah, probably. Are his songs more, you know, people like to play his songs more than mine? Of course. But are they more well thought out and profound? No way in hell. 
the guy was like a, a, a kindergarten brain compared to mine. With all due respect, you know, would there be any black leader in the history of America that could compare to me? Absolutely not. And these people know that when they use their brains. And they are desperate. They are absolutely desperate to put me beneath them to make themselves feel more powerful and more important. I'm the greatest martial artist in American history, even covertly drugged. I've done what no other martial artist could ever even dream of. Could you imagine Jackie Chan coming out and saying, well, I'll give $3,000 to whoever can beat me. I guarantee you he would be, he would be beaten. If he's accepting any challenge, hell, I would beat him. There's a lot of people that would beat him. I've done what no martial artist could ever really even dream of doing. And I've done it covertly drugged. And women have betrayed me. You should see the looks I get from these traitors. It is absolutely unacceptable. They need to be punished collectively. And we always must remember that when I talk about them, it is because they have victimized me romantically collectively the ones who weren't good enough for me convinced the ones that were to think like them with their inferior feministic and materialistic philosophies they have been conditioned by each other first and foremost to be inferior pigeons and I promise you there will be feminist scum they will say the stupidest things you can imagine to try to justify the covert drugging of the top martial artist, the shunning, the persecution, the impairing, the harassing, the stalking, the blackballing, the blacklisting, the unfair treatment, the unjust treatment. They will say stupid things, such as, with an attitude like that, no wonder women didn't want to date him. That is akin to saying that rape victim over there that's making a big fuss, no wonder somebody raped her. And no woman is probably going to have the insight to tell these chickens, look, that's how he's acting now, bitch. You're proving him right about our judgment when you say stupid things like that. That's how he's acting after being shunned for over two decades, you dumb bitch. Sit down and shut up. Instead of saying that, they will say things like, I know, right? Uh -huh. And they will think they are so smart. That is what I mean. One of many examples of what I am getting at when I say they are hiding behind mainstream misconceptions and white social norms when they do not treat me fairly and they do not give me you know, a fair shake or my rightful place in society or women are shunning me. All these things that they're doing, it all goes back to their stupidity and their inferior logic. How dare they cite that I am pointing out their evil as a reason why they shun me. How dare they sit there in all their Babylonian betrayal, those pigeon prostitutes, how dare they? How fucking dare they? Now, while I'm at war, trying to help everyone out, including women, they will say things about me. They will say things about me after I'm gone. The much anticipated reaction, especially when they realize all the shots I've taken about at, at women and how right I am. When you really think about it, I know what they're gonna say because I know women 
they don't know me. And it's the only thing they really can do. They're in a position where I'm telling the truth in a very effective, well-researched, and straightforward manner. Very honest. From someone who has no reason to lie. Someone who's given his entire life to do the right thing as uncontrolled opposition. And so what will they say? They will say, well, why should we listen to a guy who lived with his parents who was bitter because he didn't give any pussy? You know, when you think about it, they would probably say the same thing about Jesus. Why should we listen to this homeless guy who was bitter because he didn't get any pussy and that's why he was talking to the Jews the way that he was? I mean, if you cannot m make the same argument about the average uncontrolled revolutionary or the average men of philosophy or great men of philosophy such as Socrates, you know, who spent many hours thinking in deep thought, standing in the middle of the street. You know, he wasn't working a normal job. And how could you make it about someone such as myself? All the money I've given away to the poor, thousands of dollars. I'm not rich. And in the last four years or so, I've given away thousands of dollars to poor people. To the point where I have charities emailing me all the time trying to get money because they know that I've given away thousands of dollars. And I live with my parents. And I didn't do it so... I could say I'm a philanthropist or something. I even have enough money to move out. But I'm at war. They know nothing about war or efficiency. The fact that I have to explain to myself, excuse me, to, to people about myself and my situation. Because they're materialistic and they, they think about social norms so much. They don't think about practical solutions or what it's like to be in my shoes or the fact that one in three adult Americans say that they're struggling and when you're struggling it probably helps to save money in very dramatic ways such as getting roommates or living with your grandparents or your parents no they won't consider these things because they are rather disingenuous and it is extremely unfortunate. Once they are backed into a corner by my supporters and fans, they will then turn around and say, well, you know, well, what can they say? You know, give me a second here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think, you know. I had some on my mind, but, you know, I thought about, no, they, they're probably not going to take that route. No, when, when they reach that point, they'll probably have to just admit that they're wrong. So they're going to have they're going to have to fight that point. They're going to have to go back to it over and over again like a broken record. Yeah, that's probably what they're going to do. They're going to say, well, you know, there are people who establish themselves more in society than he had. How stupid is that? Was Jesus, you know, a CEO? Did he have businesses all over the ancient world? Did Gandhi? Did the Buddha? No. So the most respected men in history were not rich men. They were not very ambitious, you know, at least not financially so. But yet this will magically evade these materialistic harlots wenches and slatterns. You see how this works? You see how they just lack the depth of understanding to see why they're wrong. You see how they will go back to these pathetic social norms. This kind of I'm comfy with my nice car and my nails done and my hair done and all this stuff. All my makeup and oh, you know, whatever females do you know my clothes going shopping all the time and looking for a guy who can pay my bills and reminds me of this song 
I think it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's an old song. It goes, can you pay my bills? Can you pay this and this? Da, 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 da. You know, it's like, wow. And don't forget that I lived during a time when there was more women in higher education than men. And they were talking about equality and all this. But then they go back and say, well, I want a guy who can support me. Then they, you know, one minute they're saying, these are the same bitches, my you. One minute they're saying marriage is an oppressive institution that forces women to submit. On the other hand, they're saying, you know, another moment they're saying, well, I want a guy who is doing well for himself who can support me. I don't think you understand how much of traitors and liars women have become and how much of a grave injustice it is to pretend that they're just as respectable as women who weren't like that, you know, five decades ago or so. What happened is as people demanded more freedoms, they got carried away. They stopped looking to demand the right freedoms and they started demanding the wrong freedoms. The government is more oppressive than ever and all the sickos have the rights to be sickos. We have gender neutral bathrooms and all kinds of nonsense, but the government watches us, you know, in the shower and no one says a fucking thing about it. I mean, it is madness. It is madness. And there are females trying to fit in and, and chasing the money. If everybody, you know, had to suck a donkey dick in order to get paid a living wage, women would overlook it and date the guys who are getting paid that wage. And as, we, as it is, some people are doing sexual acts with goats to get in secret society. So there's more than enough evidence to, that supports my last statement about donkeys. <laughs> I mean, don't you see how disgusting it is? If women don't stop doing this, if they keep doing this conformist nonsense, then it's over for everyone. So, the more, every time I think about whether I should release that last video, I should. I absolutely should. Because in that video, I'm very harsh on all the people who have sold us out. And people need to know that while we were being sold out, the last chance for humanity to come together and support a transcendent hero and make society a very moral and decent place to live. They betrayed him instead. They need to know why. History will continue to repeat itself. People caring about their image. Gosh, man, it is, it is so sad. I hate traitors. And females have betrayed me most. I tried to reason with them. You know, you know, I was on Tinder for like two years, almost every single day. Every once in a while, I'd try to talk to a female, you know, in person. And it became less and less common until I just stopped altogether. There was no use anymore. They were stuck on betrayal. They all pretty much thought that I was handsome. But they were so busy looking for a guy driving a Mercedes or something. Or a guy that their friends would like. And, you know, conformist trash. And then there was unattractive females trying to take advantage. I mean, if you were in my shoes, there wouldn't be a single question in anyone's mind why I felt the need to go over this again and again. Mark my words, the battle between the people and the oppressor will be lost because 
of females and their attitudes. Reproduction is key to this. Since the people in charge control their reproduction, we are losing the battle. They are using women as these trophies, as women are objectified by the elite, and feminists are silent about it. And I'm not talking about just corporations, I'm talking about the secret societies behind society. They're using women. They're using the different political groups to create certain sentiments in society, certain attitudes, philosophies, beliefs, and ideologies that make it so when you do it things the way they want you to, you are thousands of times more likely to get an attractive woman. And if you go against them, they will go out of their way to make sure that you do not. If that's not controlling reproduction, what is? If that's not using women as an object, as a reward, as, this, as the spoils of spiritual war being used by the devil and the Satan worshipers, then what is? Don't you see why they must be called out over and over again? Don't you see why I have to make sure that history remembers that the top martial artist was shunned by all the most attractive, all the attractive women his age, period. All the women who were seven, sevens all the way to tens, you know, in his generation, within 10 or 15 years of him, you know, shunned him. He didn't approve. He didn't compromise in order to get one of them. He didn't sell out. He said, no, this is wrong. I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to call you out and I'm going to accept my oath and being single the rest of my life. I'm going to accept not being able to reproduce because this lesson has to be taught to all the scum who are trying to teach everyone a lesson. This is what happens when you try to teach a transcendent hero a lesson. You inferior minds. You inferior souls. You get taught a lesson. You and all of your harlots. They're children. You know why there will not be a Chukwa Emeka Junior Junior for you to play with? Because these harlots sold me out, they sold the future out, they sold out their races, all of humanity, and God, so they could be pretty and accepted by their friends. And that same philosophy, that same line of thinking, that same school of thought that sold us all out is going to be used to justify betraying me. Mark my words. It will be that same line of thinking that had them betray us all in the first place. That allowed for the elite, the aristocracy, the oligarchs to control reproduction in the first place. They created this world of selfish liars, cheaters, and treacherous fiends. That same illogical, nonsensical school of thought will be used to justify shunning me my entire life. They will argue that women were right. Once my story comes out, they will be forced to address it and say, well, it wasn't that he was right. It wasn't that we was wrong. It was that he was wrong. And they will be forced to hide behind social norms to do it the same cowardly, despicable ways that they did to try to deny me my rightful place in society in the first place.